Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And today we're going to continue our series in Mountain Lion Server and we're going to talk about SSL certificates. Now SSL certificates are uh, secure socket layer certificates and what that basically means is it allows for secure communications to happen between your server and any other devices or the outside world. And so what it does is it basically encrypts all of the communications that happen over that particular channel so that no one else can break in and view what you're seeing or hack uh, the data that you're submitting over that line. A lot of times what can happen is, is people can uh, somehow s sniff the packets, which are basically just the information that's going from one computer to another, and they might be able to grab information from you while you're doing that if it's not on a secure line. So basically this just creates a, a security uh, protocol where people can't listen in on what's happening between your, com your computer and another computer that's trying to access your server. And so this uh, SSL certificate is very important for uh, various other services that we have, such as maybe your calendar, your contacts for Profile Manager. Uh, it's required really for Profile Manager to be able to update your devices and access your various services. So it is something that we need to set up. And so I'm going to show you uh, how to set it up both for a home user where you really don't need uh, an outside certificate and also how to set it up for those of you that may want to purchase uh, a certificate from an outside company. And I'll tell you the difference between the two and why that's important or not. So here we are in our server application. And one of the first things that I want to set up is I want to enable Apple push notifications right here because we're setting this up prior to setting up Profile Manager. And in Profile Manager, you're going to want to be able to push changes to your devices that you make because the beauty of Profile Manager is I can make changes within the server application and then those changes can automatically be pushed to all of my devices. So let's just set that up right now so you can see how that looks and what the process looks like. So I want to enable Apple push notifications. You'll notice right away it pops down a window as asking for my Apple ID. And so um, I'm going to type that in right now for this computer. And then what will happen is, is it will allow us uh, to get the certificate. So I'm going to click Get Certificate in a minute. Now, if you don't have an Apple ID, you want to create one. Let me just click this before I, I do that. Uh, you do have the ability to create an Apple ID right on Apple's website. Let me just show you what that looks like. You click Create ID, and then you go in and fill out all of this information, what your Apple ID should be, your password, uh, security questions, birth date, your first name, um, all this different information um, that you fill in, and that creates an Apple ID for you. Now, your Apple ID basically is what you use to either purchase things off of iTunes, or it's what you, uh, probably the one you really want to use is the one that you use to access iCloud if you've set one of those up before. If you haven't, then you need to come to this screen uh, to set those things up. Uh, if you have, then you should be in good shape. So let me just punch this down here. Now, I'm, I've got all my credentials in there. I'm going to click Get Certificate. And what will happen is, is now it's going to go out and acquire the certificate that I need and it's going to set it up for me so that I can enable Apple push notifications. And so what that means is that Apple then controls kind of how that works so that those push notifications are secure. So that they're not, you know, not anybody out there can just push changes to your devices and mess them up for you. So it's going to go acquire the certificate and when it's done I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, as you can see we've acquired the push notification certificate and you can see the Apple IDs there. Notice that it has an expiration date, right? It's going to expire in 2013. So it gives you a year uh, on that certificate uh, where you can renew it and everything. You can also manage your certificates by pushing this button. It'll take you to the website and show you the different certificates that you've got. So now that we have this ready to go, all I've got to do is click OK. And now Apple push notifications have been uh, set up. So we're ready to go with that. Now you'll see here on the SSL certificate area we've got custom and then there's an edit button. Let me just click the edit button here and show you. You notice that we have a custom certificate already set up and this was set up when we loaded server because server uh, you know automatically puts one of these self-signed certificates in there. If I could just click this you can see it's a self-signed certificate uh, set up with our uh, domain that we set up originally when we set the server up. 
So what we want to do is I want to create a certificate just to show you what that looks like. Now, if I push this little button down here, I, you can see there's numerous things that I can do. I can generate uh, a signing request. I'll show you what that means in a minute. I can replace a certificate with a signed or renewed one, or I can manage my certificates. You can see there, those are, the, those are some of the options. And you can see the different certificates I have here. So what I'm going to do is click Manage Certificates. So I can pull that up, and you'll see that I've got uh, I've got an Apple System Default self-signed certificate. I've got a Server Fallback SSL certificate here that uh, that's there just in case something goes wrong. And then I've got the private self-signed certificate, and I can go in and replace them or do whatever I want with these. Let me just click the plus button for a second, and let's let's uh, create a, a certificate identity just to show you what that looks like. Now, when you create it, you have a little assistant that walks you through. So I can put down, uh, again, the name of my host, right? The name that I set up originally is what I would want to put in there. Now, uh, for some of you, if, if you're looking at uh, maybe hosting your own website, you've got a, a bigger domain that you're working on, it's not just for home users, you'd probably want to just take out the server part off the front and just go with whatever your domain name is, .com for instance, if you were doing a .com. Since in this case I'm doing a .private, uh, I don't have that there, but you can do it that way, and then that way it wouldn't limit your options. Then www would work, you could set up uh, you know, DNS for all those other services so that no matter what people put in before your example.com, for instance, uh, it would still go to your particular uh, domain and your SSL certificate would work. For right now, I'm going to leave this alone because we're doing it for home users and we're not looking at that kind of access. Now, identity type, right? You have a self-signed root, that's what you want, you don't want the leaf. Uh, you have a certificate type. You have all these different types that you can set up. We definitely want the server one uh, to make that happen. Uh, you can have let me override defaults if you want to. I'm just going to leave this alone. Uh, what's nice, I got this little learn more button here. If you click that, it comes up with uh, a little descriptor of what's meant by the type of certificate, what's meant by the overrides. Uh, those kinds of things so that as you're making decisions it helps you out. This is an addition in Mountain Lion Server and it's a nice little help that they've added there. So then I can create, I can click create. It says you're about to create a self-signed certificate. Again, doesn't create a guarantee, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Continue. And so now I've created a new one. Okay, and I can say done. And uh, now it says server wants to export these, these uh, keys from your keychain. Uh, and that's a uh, kind of privacy things I'm, I'm going to say always allow. And so now we've got two self-signed certificates that are the same. Here's the one that the server, uh, here's the one that I, uh, that I created, here's the one that the server created. Uh, they're, both, uh, they're both the same uh, certificates, but uh, so what I think I'm going to do on this one is I will uh, delete the one that was created earlier. Let me just get rid of that one. It says, are you sure you want to delete this? Uh, or yes, I'm going to delete it. And then what I'm going to do is click uh, this one right here and say, uh, replace uh, so then I'm just gonna leave that alone just like that okay I'm gonna click OK and I've got my certificate created now and everything's ready to go okay so now that that's there and that's set I've got that set now if I just click the edit here again I've got all these different services it says custom what I'm gonna do is just come in here and say I wanna use the self-signed certificate that I just created and notice all the services disappear because now it knows it's gonna use this particular certificate for all the services that I just put together and so now it's got that ready to go and we're all set with our SSL certificate. Now I just want to show you for those of you that may want to uh, purchase your own certificate uh, there's a number of places you can do that at. Let me just uh, pull up a website here for instance there's one called Namecheap uh, where you can buy SSL certificates from them in fact, if I just click this, there's a bunch of different certificate types you can buy. Uh, anywhere from like $199, they've got some to $895. Now, again, the difference between one that you're going to pay from an outside host and one from an inside is this. Okay, First of all, you're going to have to pay an annual fee for those outside. You don't pay anything for the one that's self-signed. You think, well, why would I want an outside one then if I have to pay for it? Well, the reason you would want to do that and pay for it is because it allows people on the outside when they hit your website or any of your services to know automatically that your server is trusted, that somebody on the outside has verified that your server is you. If you try to access your server from the outside, for instance, with a self-signed certificate without someone on the outside authenticating it, there's a warning message that comes up that says, hey, uh, we're not really sure who this is. They signed their own certificate. Do you want to still access the website anyway?
Now, if it's your home users, it's yourself, you can say yes because you know it's you and you're fine. But for people who don't know, and if you have customers or people that are accessing your site, uh, they're going to get maybe a little freaked out and decide probably not to access your site because they don't know if it's secure or not or if they can trust the certificate that's on it. But if you have an outside certificate, what happens is it automatically goes through and everything's good because the computers check and make sure that everything is secure. So again, if you're a home user, you probably don't need it. But if you're running some kind of business off your, uh, your home uh, server, then you probably do want to get an SSL certificate. Now what happens is when you buy this, uh, you, you want to buy one of these certificates, there's a couple of things you're going to need to do. Okay, So you're going to purchase it. But what you're going to do in here is you're going to generate, you're going to set up your information uh, in a little more detail than we set it up. Okay, I'm not going to walk you through all those details, but you'll put in a few little more, a little bit more information about yourself. Then you're going to generate this self-signing request, and you'll notice it's all this gobbledygook here that's put together. Well, all of that gobbledygook that's on there, okay, is you would copy and you would paste it into. Uh, the um, website as you're buying your certificate so that they know it's you it gives them specific information about your server and that would allow them to generate a certificate for you okay now what what happens next is they will then send you <clears throat> an actual uh, SSL certificate and you usually get two files okay now one of the files would, that, that you would do is in here so what you would do is you would click uh, on your actual server here and so you say manage certificates and this would come up and then what you would do is you would say replace certificate with a signed or renewed certificate and you'd get this window here and what you would do is drag the certificate from the email that they sent you into this window here and then click replace and it would replace the one that you self generated with the one that's been verified okay that would be one step that you would use to do it I'm gonna cancel that because I'm not gonna do that because everything's fine with the way I've set it up for what I'm doing here now the other thing you're gonna need to do is you're gonna also have to go into your key chain all right, you have to go into your keychain access, you'll have to unlock it. You'll go to your system area and you'll go to certificates and you'll want to drag the other certificate that they give you into your system area here. Okay, it's to be like an intermediate type certificate. And that is the chain that allows it to authenticate the fact that it's you and nothing got changed along the way. So you would actually drag that in here and then that would show up and everything should work out. Now, if you've done everything right, then you'll have this little green check that says everything's valid. Uh, next to your SSL certificate and in your server application it would say it's it's valid as well and it knows who it is as opposed to if I go back here again to edit and I go into my self signed certificate and let me just go manage certificates as opposed to having it hey this hasn't been verified by a third party you would see a checkbox there that would be a green check mark that says hey it's verified and everything's good and so that's how you would know the difference all right so that's how that would work for you and that's how you use SSL certificates. So hopefully that helps you get started. Uh, I added a few things in here from when we did the Lion Server one just to give you a little bit more background and hopefully that gets you started with your SSL certificates. So this is all I have for today. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.